Conventional wisdom says that you can't build new muscle after 60 or 70. Certainly not after 80 or 90, right? But is that actually true? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at sarcopenia, what it is and what causes it, and the impact that it has on aging. Then we'll talk about a new study that just came out that explores whether or not people can build new muscle tissue into their 60s, 70s, 80s, and even 90s. Okay, sarcopenia is the age-related loss of muscle strength and muscle tissue. Once we get into our 30s, we tend to lose muscle mass at a rate of about 3 to 5% per decade. Over the course of their lives, most men will lose about 30% of their total muscle mass, in some cases even more. And this loss of muscle tissue is connected to the loss of bone mass. Many of the same conditions or factors that lead to sarcopenia also lead to osteopenia and eventually to osteoporosis. Loss of both muscle and bone mass can cause a loss of mobility, and all of this leads to frailty. And frailty is one of the biggest risk factors for all-cause mortality. Older men with sarcopenia are twice as likely to break a bone in a fall, regardless of whether they have osteoporosis or not. If you fall and break your hip as an older adult, there's a 15 to 30% chance that you'll die within one year. Frailty also means the loss of independence and autonomy. It means that we can't get around as well as we used to. We can't do the things that we used to do. And we can't take care of ourselves as well as we used to. The loss of muscle mass can also have a big impact on our metabolism. Muscle tissue burns more calories than just about any other type of tissue, and having less of that muscle tissue means that we burn fewer calories. And a slowing metabolism is tied to weight gain. It's easier to gain weight and more difficult to lose it. Now, originally, sarcopenia was thought to be inevitable. It was considered to be a normal part of healthy aging and more or less irreversible. Now, as it turns out, not true. In the last decade or so, medical science has been taking a really close look at sarcopenia, and it's revealed a number of startling surprises that have revised how we think about sarcopenia. But before we can take a look at some of the new discoveries, we first need to look at some definitions. And let's start off with motor unit as it relates to muscle fibers. A motor unit is a group of muscle fibers that are all activated by the same neuron, called a motor neuron. Neurons start at the spinal column and run all the way to the group of muscle fibers in the muscle that they're activating. At the end of the motor neuron, it branches out into a bunch of terminals called axons. Each muscle fiber in the motor unit has a connection called a neuromuscular junction to one or more axons. Now, these neurons are cells, and cells use something called vesicles to signal other cells. Vesicles are simply containers, and in the case of the motor neurons, these vesicles contain neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters are secreted from the terminals of the axons, cross the gap between the axon and the muscle, and arrive at receptors where they then activate the muscle fiber. The gap between the axon and the muscle is called the synapse. For a long time, it's been thought that a process called denervation was the primary cause of sarcopenia. Denervation is when the axon begins to pull away from the muscle receptors, creating what's called a synaptic cleft. As this gap becomes larger, it becomes more difficult for the neurotransmitters to cross this gap, and so signaling becomes diminished between the axon and the muscle fiber, resulting in less activation. But recent studies have shown that denervation isn't as responsible for the atrophy caused by sarcopenia as once thought. As axons begin to pull away and become denervated, other axons can sprout and re-innervate the muscle fiber. Now, I'll reveal the real cause of sarcopenia in a minute, but first, I'd like to take just a moment to let you know about a free training that I posted. This training is all about creating a longevity plan, a roadmap that will guide you to a longer health span and reduce your biological age. And not just any plan, but your own personalized precision longevity blueprint. This training will lay out the foundations of a longevity lifestyle and then cover the steps needed to design your own roadmap. Now, I remember when I first started out on my own longevity journey, I was basically doing whatever I heard about in blogs, videos, podcasts, and studies. But I soon got overwhelmed. It was like information overload. Now, I've been following longevity science for about seven years, and I finally got it all dialed in. I've taken what I learned and put it into this free training. Now, if you're interested in this, just click right up here, and that'll take you to a page where you can register for the training. 
I hope I see you there. Okay, back to sarcopenia. Like I was saying earlier, there have been several studies that have shown that the process of denervation is not what's causing most of the atrophy caused by sarcopenia. What's causing it is a loss of satellite cells. Okay, what's a satellite cell? A satellite cell is a type of stem cell that's responsible for creating new muscle fibers. Satellite cells are in a state of quiescence and sit on the outside of the muscle fibers until they get activated. Satellite cell activation and the creation of new muscle fibers happens concurrently with muscle cell atrophy and degeneration. At least, that's what happens when someone is young and all these processes are running tickety-boo. But as we start aging, we often start losing these critical satellite cells, and so degeneration begins to overtake new muscle fiber formation. Here's the thing about satellite cells. When unactivated, they enter a reversible, non-dividing state of quiescence. They're basically asleep, and this happens under homeostatic conditions. Now, homeostasis is simply a state of stable equilibrium. However, in response to an injury, which, by the way, is what happens when you do a session of weight training, these satellite cells become activated and re-enter the cell cycle, dividing and creating new cells. Now, most of these new cells are used to repair and create new muscle fibers, to regenerate new muscle tissue. But a few of them, a small population, are held back, are preserved to become quiescent again and are stored for future use. However, here's the thing. As we get older, we become less active. And so quiescent cells tend to stay quiescent. Prolonged quiescence will cause the satellite cell to undergo programmed cellular senescence. This is an irreversible state in which the satellite cells permanently leave the cell cycle and stop dividing. Once these satellite cells enter this state, they can no longer be activated and they're no longer available to create new tissue. Here's how that works. There's two types of signaling that happens along motor neurons. There's anterograde signaling and retrograde signaling. Anterograde signaling are the signals that travel from the spine to the muscle. And it's these signals that activate the muscles, causing them to contract. But there's also retrograde signals. Now, these are signals that travel from the muscle back up the neuron to the spine. Now, this is basically feedback that the signaling worked and the, uh, and the muscle did its job. Now, there's basically three different modalities or ways that this can work. In a healthy individual who's active and exercising on a regular basis, there's beneficial signaling going both ways, both anterograde and retrograde signaling. This keeps the system running like it should, with muscle fiber regeneration and degeneration in balance. The second modality involves motor neuron death and neuromuscular junction destabilization, and it's less common. In this situation, the muscle is deprived of any neural input, causing denervation, fiber atrophy, and eventually muscle fiber death. The third modality is caused by inactivity, and it's starting to look like this is the primary cause of sarcopenia. Older adults tend to become less active. This is causes a reduction in anterograde signaling and a lack of retrograde signaling or an increase of retrograde signaling that is actually hostile to the motor neuron. The bottom line is inactivity, which increases in most people as they age, is not only harmful to motor neurons and can cause muscle tissue denerv denervation, it also leads to prolonged quiescence in satellite cells, causing them to become senescent and no longer available for muscle tissue repair and regeneration. As a result, muscle fibers start to atrophy and die off. Muscle tissue becomes weaker and muscle mass becomes smaller. The result? Age-related sarcopenia. So here's the real question, I guess. Is there a point of no return? A point at which muscles can no longer be regenerated? A point beyond which it is no longer possible to build new muscle tissue? Apparently not. A new study was recently published in the International Journal of Sport Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism, and they wanted to look at whether or not it was possible to build new muscle tissue in an elderly population. So what they did was they enrolled two cohorts. One consisted of 17 older adults aged 65 to 75, and a second cohort of 12 adults who were all over the age of 85 years, some of them in their 90s. Each group did 12 weeks of resistance training. There were no other changes. They didn't make any changes to their diet or to their supplements or medications that they were taking. They just did 12 weeks of strength training. 
They measured both muscle size or volume and muscle efficiency or strength, how much weight they could lift. And they did these measurements before they started the 12 weeks. They did them again at six weeks and then at the end of the 12 weeks. And the results were pretty interesting, if not downright startling. Both groups saw a slight reduction in whole body fat mass and an improvement in whole body lean mass, particularly in appendicular lean mass, which is the arms and legs. And they saw an improvement in both muscle volume and in muscle strength. But here's what's really interesting. As you might expect, the 85 plus group started out in worse shape, but the improvement made by both groups was about the same. The 85 plus group had improvements in both muscle volume and muscle strength that were equal to the improvements in the 65 to 75 age group. In fact, in measuring the percentage of improvement in the quadriceps, the 85 plus group actually had a slightly better improvement. This study was remarkable in that it demonstrated that it's not only possible to put on muscle and improve muscular strength at any age, but that the amount of improvement that's possible remains pretty consistent regardless of the age. Now, one thing I would like to have seen is a comparison between elderly people and young people who hadn't been doing strength training. I would imagine that the younger people would probably have seen more improvement, but it would be interesting to see how much more improvement was possible or how little. I'd also like to see a study that looked at how much of improvement would have been possible in older individuals who were consuming higher amounts of protein and taking supplements, particularly longevity supplements. Okay, so the big takeaway from this video should be that regardless of your age, you're never too old to put on muscle and defeat sarcopenia, but it's gonna take some work and some time. You're gonna to have to do strength training and you're gonna to have to do it consistently. But if you do over time, you should start seeing a more muscular you. So guys, start lifting. Now I've talked about sarcopenia before and if you'd like to watch that video, you can find it right here. If you'd like to register for my free training, you can do that right here. And that's it. I'm out of here. Catch you next time.